guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you guys are doing well today. Are Swiss watches in trouble? This is a topic that I've been... People have asked me a lot. Obviously, people are questioning it with all the recent releases of watches um, that kind of compete for the wrist time that these mechanical pieces obviously are taking up every single day of our lives as watch enthusiasts. So I thought I would give you my thoughts on if Swiss watch, watch, watches are in trouble, what fashion watches have done to Swiss watch... Uh, Swiss watches or mechanical watches in general and also to talk about smart watches which is obviously cannibalizing a lot of the wrist time that you have um, if you want to just look at my wrists I've got two um, watches on but um, that's gonna be the topic for today but before we get into it if you haven't noticed this is a life on the wrist um, launch collection tee be sure to check it out in our clothing store we only have a couple more of these left so if you want to get your hands on the first uh, collection that we've released for, for life on the wrist merchandise be sure to check out life on the wrist uh, clothing so our swiss watch is in trouble i think it, it is without a doubt the obvious answer and you can probably click off click off now you know, as soon as i say this swiss watches are obviously or the mechanical watches are obviously in trouble um I think the perfect example is when you see someone like me where I'm wearing a, a Apple Watch and a mechanical watch on my wrist. Um, there are people who have dropped mechanical watches for an Apple Watch or a smart watch. And so I, I think it's without a doubt um, there are different wrist accessories that are going to end up um, being prioritized by people um, for a multitude of reasons, um, you know, uh, lifestyle. Want, want for health information, um, price, um, many, any, any kind of reason you can think of why you would end up purchasing something other than a mechanical wristwatch. Um, it, it, mechanical watches are in trouble. Um, I think it's, it, is, um, it is foolish to think that mechanical watches, Swiss watches, are not in trouble because, um, as an example, smart watches, I'm pretty sure Apple um, just exceeded Ro uh, Rolex, I think, I want to say, for number of units sold, um, which is a huge feat uh, just in itself. And um, again, like the statistics are, are right in front of units. It would be foolish not to, to recognize that. Um, I'm going to talk about fashion watches and I'll talk about smart watches. So fashion watches, I'm going to kind of define those. And we've done a couple videos about fashion watches in the past, but I kind of define fashion watches as pieces that are from brands who are looking to create watches that are a little bit more um, uh, perhaps uh, mass produced pieces that um, are not focused solely on the um, watchmaking but also on the way in which it goes, it fits with trends. And um, a couple examples would be an MVMT watch, any of the fashion brands that create watches. Um, that are not kind of coming from a uh, uh, a, um, a solely mechanical watch group within that manufacturer, um, and um, I think the reason why these are so uh, so desired by those who are looking for something to take up um, to, to wear on the wrist is that they have many of the aesthetics that people are looking for in a watch, but they are priced at you know. 50 US dollars, 100 US dollars, a lot cheaper than um, than uh, a mechanical watch, which can cost a thousand US dollars, two thousand US dollars, five thousand US dollars. Um, Michael Kors is a great example where people are, are are purchasing them because it has a many fashion watches have many of the aesthetics that that um, mechanical watches have for basically no price. I think it's also desirable for people to buy those types of watches because they kind of go with a lot of the trends that people are interested in during that time, right? So, um, people are, so, you know, I think there's a there's a thing called a boyfriend watch where women wear a little bit more of a, a big chunky chronograph um, on their wrist because it's that's the, the style that's kind of in for that time. Um, and so, I think fashion watches are appealing to those who are kind of trying to find something to wear on their wrist. Uh, one, because of the way it looks, and two, probably because of the price. Um, now, when it comes to those two elements, I think uh, price, I don't think mechanical watches can really compete. Uh, I think there are some manufacturers who are going to create pieces that are a little bit more reasonably priced, but unfortunately, fashion watches, because of the way that they're manufactured, 
it's very hard to compete on that on that front. Um, when it comes to the way the watches look, I think those who are a little bit more um, interested in attention to detail, looking at specific parts of the watch to see if you know a hand reaches the hour markers or um, uh, a bezel is perfectly aligned. People who are very uh, detail oriented and want those to be uh, perfect are probably going to go more towards something that's a little more expensive because instead of being mass produced, uh, the watch manufacturers focusing on those finer details. Um, but a lot of the times, and I would say for the most part, people aren't really that uh, detail oriented and they aren't looking for those little small nuances. So I think fashion watches are obviously going to give Swiss watches a, a, a run. Smart watches are something very, very similar. Reasonably priced compared to, to mechanical watches. Also, there's a lot more features you can get with a, with a smart watch. It can tell you heart rate, it can track your workouts. It, the list kind of goes on with what a smartwatch can really do. I think it should, like, think about your phone. Everything your phone can do, a smartwatch is eventually going to end, probably already does, uh, can uh, be, be, be done um, on, your, on your smartwatch. And so, yes, mechanical watches, Swiss watches, the Swiss watch industry is in trouble because it's very hard to compete with this type of, of environment. I think people... Are more, watch manufacturers are more receptive to that idea because they realize what quartz watches, they remember what quartz watches did to purely mechanical watches, how it really cannibalized the market and made many companies go out of business. But I will, I don't know, of course there's a but, there's always gonna be a but when it comes to this, this topic. Um, if what Swiss watch manufacturers have to do is understand how to capture the next generation of watch collectors. There are people who are younger, who are interested in watches and that's great, but it's not the majority of people. And I think the way they need to, manufacturers need to realize that, that is the biggest thing that they need to capture the younger generations. I think uh, Hublot with Tag Heuer releasing smart watches, maybe, maybe their attempt at trying to capture that, that um, younger, um, audience but I think they need to capture them somehow with mechanical watches because if they don't there goes mechanical watches you know so like I said there's people who are interested in mechanical watches that should be the goal how do we capture young the young audience and people who end up getting into mechanical watches I think will be lifelong uh, enthusiasts um, do I think Swiss watch manufacturing is going to be wiped out completely by these I don't think so. At least within the near future, I do not think so. I think there may be some consolidation to, to companies who are um, creating things that uh, people really like, uh, making sure that the designs are, are in line with what people are looking for. It's gonna consolidate the market. I for sure think that's gonna happen. But um, do I think it's gonna go away? I don't think so. But it's in trouble. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. There are things that are going to take uh, wrist, uh, take priority for, for more people for what they were on the wrist um, and it's going to be an interesting I think it's going to be an interesting uh, next 10 years it's going to be an interesting next 20 years I'm kind of excited to, to see what, what ends up happening what innovative things come out of uh, Swiss watch manufacturers I think the quartz crisis was a perfect example of where I think Swiss watches eventually realized we are in trouble with, with quartz watches they are cannibalizing our market market share and when companies are backed against the wall and have to somehow innovate um, to to regain where they were that is where such interesting things come out of Swiss watch manufacturers that's why I think 70s watches are so cool because I think this was their attempt to one go with the aesthetics of that time but also try and compete a little bit with what was capturing people's um, people's minds when it comes to watches so Looking forward to the next 10 years. Um, obviously, I'm going to be a mechanical watch enthusiast during that whole time, so there's no changing me. Uh, if you are new to Life on the Wrist, welcome to Life on the Wrist. Um, be sure to hit that like button for us if you, really like, if you like these types of videos. Also, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn that bell icon on so that you can be notified when we upload videos. We upload videos about three times a week, um, so you can look forward to our content. Um, then, if you are a returning uh, Life on the Wrist uh, viewer, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you aren't. 
already subscribed. Um, makes no sense. Why, why don't you just hit the subscribe button? Um, also, if you like our type of content, be sure to follow us on all our social medias. Our, um, you just type in Life on the Wrist, you'll find us on any of your social media platforms. Um, we also have a podcast if you'd like to get more content from us that way. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time.